Welcome to my channel. We are doing a unboxing of a new deck that I received yesterday. It is the Astrology Reading Oracle. Let me shut this blind. I see that's going to be an issue already. A little better. Okay, so these are by Allison Chester Lambert. And I'm so very drawn to astrology. I understand the significance of it. And even mo more so since my spiritual awakening. So we are going to go right into it. She set these. This is a beautiful box, by the way. Beautiful. Nice size. And um, I do believe she set these up in three sets of 12 so there's a 36 card deck here and it is the 12 houses the 12 signs and then i do believe planets so we will go this is a super nice box super nice very nice size um book Set these to the side so Again, maybe you can see it better there. These are astrology reading cards. It's an oracle deck by Allison Chester Lambert, who is an astrologer, and Richard Crooks, which is the illustrator. So I was excited about these because I'm learning astrology. I'm very drawn to it, and I do believe these will help me learn even more and step forward and also maybe if you tune into my channel as i use these you can learn more on the astrology um she's got it listed out very nicely which i do recommend um a good book is important i still find significance in the book some people like to use them some people don't um, I really trust my intuition and go on that. See, she's got it set up in the three sets of 12, which is super cool. And um, let me see what she says here briefly. I'm not going to go into the book that much. She just explains which each set of the 12 is, um, how these work when you're doing a reading. She's got some color in her book, too. The planet cards. Um, of course, the zodiac signs and the houses. So, super excited about this one. And like I said, I'll be learning as I go because I'm drawn to astrology and I really dove deep into it more so even after my spiritual awakening. So, let's put these. I love the green. The green are the house cards. So, there's going to be 12 there. Anytime you're doing cards on... Um, video I have noticed that even the matte ones are sometimes hard to um, see because they get a glare but the matte and high gloss either way so the zodiac sign cards are all in the purple very beautiful they're slippery because they're brand new and then the planet cards are in the beautiful blue Woo, so I'm excited. Let me move these forward. We'll go into, which do we want to do first? The zodiac signs? We'll go with the planets first. How about that? So, Chiron, the wounded healer. I'm familiar with this one. Your healing power, empathy, and ability to teach or learn remedies. So, I love it. She's got the, the glyph on there. Chiron, kind of representative of what it stands for. Like it, I like it, I like it. Jupiter, your confidence, courage, self belief, and luck. So, expansion. That's going to be super nice because I don't logically memorize all of the glyphs yet. I know a lot of them, but. So cool. Mars, your physical energy, drive, strength, and fighting spirit. So this is our action planet, masculine. I believe this will be a beautiful learning tool for anybody that's um, new to the path of astrology and or even somebody that's been 
on the path of kind of remembering astrology. Mercury, how you think, communicate, write, talk, travel. We have that going retrograde pretty soon. It's the ruling planet of Virgo and Gemini. I'm a Virgo myself, my sun sign. Where Mercury is in your birth natal chart is significant. The moon, your unconscious, sensitive, inner emotions and responses. So Luna, receptivity, your unconscious gut, internal intuition, thinking. Neptune, your fantasies, yearnings, longings, and potential for illusion. Pluto, your ability to transform, take a big leap for, toward a rebirth. So very symbolic of this ruling Scorpio, the, the sign of transformation. And Pluto is why? Phoenix rising is just one of the symbolisms of Pluto because it's death and transformation. So what do we get with that? Rebirth. So that's cool. Saturn, the part of you that accepts challenge to gain wisdom. Ruler of Capricorn. We have that Saturn-Pluto conjunct that was right at the beginning of January 2020. Continuing to rebuild structures, right? Our value systems. Mm, I like it. The sun, your immortal spirit, purpose, destiny is involved. So this is our life force energy. Where we come across to the world, our masculine. Again, the sun is masculine. The feminine is the Luna, Uranus. Your potential for sudden change, enlightenment, and awakening Venus, the part of you that desires beauty, success, indulgence, and valuables. She's beautiful. Vesta, the goddess within your sacred spiritual center and quiet dignity. That's beautiful. Feminine, obviously, right? Okay. The zodiac. Now to the 12 zodiac signs. Love the colors that she did on these. Very beautiful. She and he here. Richard Crooks and Allison Chester Lambert. So Virgo, imagine that. I'm a Virgo. I flipped it over first. The energy around you is dutiful, hesitant, and humble with a dis discriminating diligence and painstaking air. So hard worker mutable sign earthy harvest season Taurus this is my moon sign funny the energy around you shows the abundance of nature it is rich earthy productive yet relaxed and slow I love the elements of Earth. Scorpio, the energy is intense, masterful, thoughtful, magnetically charming, but also secretive and possessive. Each sign has a lower and higher octave. Whoops, my puppy's bump on my table. So what we want to do within ourselves is balance the all four elements within us because then we're in harmony and then we're listening to our soul. Beautiful, I love the greens fixed water sign fixed isn't always a good thing and we all have that like I said we have all signs so Sagittarius this this is my rising sign this energy Im, imbues power superior confidence enthusiasm with faith good fortune and authority Sagittarius Again, pros and cons, lower and higher octave of all of these. Your key is your soul's evolution is to balance and harmonize and be the best that you can be. Pisces, the, this energy is wistful, endlessly loving, compassionate, and forgiving. It confuses and softens resolve. So water sign. 
She really did. She and he put some beautiful colors into these. And I love how they did 12, 12, and 12. Quite interesting. And going to be a very wonderful learning tool as well. Libra. I have a stellium in Libra, so three or more planets in one sign or one house or sign is called a stellium. This energy is diplomatic and gracious. It seeks harmony and balance in all. And that is definitely me. All in my 11th house of friendships and whatnot. The outer world, people and connections. Beautiful. This is cool deck. I'm excited. Leo. The energy is flamboyant, dramatic, proud, passionate. It focuses on the importance of self-belief. We just had the Leo full moon. Higher heart, in balance and harmony. Very, very beautiful and righteous and passionate. Fire sign ruled by the sun. Gemini. The energy is communi communicative, mischievous, lively, witty, informative. Stimulating exchange is possible. Gemini is also ruled by Mercury. So communication. Capricorn. The energy around you is serious, materialistic, and hardworking. It bestows shrewdness and cautious ambition. So the busy, busy mountain goat there climb into the top of the this is the earthy sign as well cancer this energy is emotional sensitive caring loving it may cons may concern con fam family a mother or a child so very maternal water sign ruled by the moon Aries, the energy around you is dynamic and spontaneous, crusading, impulsive, action is likely. This is one to calm. I have Mars in my 11th house. It's very symbolic. I just learned this. I will fight with my friends, but I will never fight against them. And it's so true. Where this is placed, all of these in your birth natal chart, house 1 through 12 is very significant. It's very telling. It's a very wonderful way to get to who you really are as a soul and balance and harmonize that so we can basically it's for the evolution of our soul I always say they should have gave us a birth natal chart at birth instead of a social security number mm, the matrix didn't want us empowered that's why they didn't so here I am sharing it with you today Aquarius this energy is freedom loving rebellious idealistic and technological and we are going into the age of Aquarius I have a daughter who's an Aquarian and she is teaching me so much I love these I can't wait to utilize these on my channel so now we're going into the houses guys and this is the beautiful green <clears throat> have me a cup of coffee The twelfth house, we're going backwards, but that's okay. Here, no, let's here and flip them. First house, what people see, the impression of you. So that's the first house of self. This is how people see you in the world. Your sun sign. Second house, your assets, your finances, the things that you value. I think that's ruled by Taurus, pretty sure. Which is my moon. The third house, your potential to learn something and your local neighborhood. The community, huh? The fourth house, your home, the roots of your being. So your home to me, I love that. Your home is also your internal home, right? We make it what it is. The fifth house, where you have fun, romance, and create things you are proud of. The 
the sixth house, the work, health, and the duty area of your life. seventh house the area of your life that is about long-term significant partners romantic business or family i used to say i have the seven stars tattooed on my shoulder and i used to tell people all the time seven because i'm not good in relationships but when you heal yourself when you put yourself first and your self-love first then you can have relationships that are authentic little note to my younger self had i known right the eighth house this transformational area of your life is about shared resources and intense emotions your ninth house broadening your horizons either spiritually academically or on a long journey well, i'm getting a right ear download right now i believe that's real I believe that's Sagittarius, eighth, ninth house, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> Sagittarius, higher learning, spiritual learning. When you're in harmony, when you're not in harmony, they're kind of selfish and players. The tenth house, your achievements and status in the outside world. The 11th house, where the cosmos grant wishes, luck, friends, and social occasions. I have Mars in this one, and it made such complete sense to me when I had listened to an astrologer the other night, and she's like, Mars in the 11th house. Interesting one. Especially with the stellium I have in Libra, I'm all about justice and humanity and justice for all, but at the same time, I'm a straight-from-the-hip shooter, and sometimes... Might get into it with my friends, but I always will fight, maybe spat with them, but never against them, and that's so very true. I love astrology. It really makes you learn about yourself. And lastly, the 12th house. This is the area of your life that is overwhelming you. Overwhelming. You yield to a greater cause or power. 12th house. Love it. If you haven't got your birth natal chart yet, please do so, guys. You will not regret it. I am Deanna with Empowering Empaths. I am on my journey, my soul's passion to encourage, uplift, empaths, sensitive souls, way showers. I use Oracle to encourage us on my channel. I have many different playlists over there. I just kind of come on and share whatever it is my inner calling tells me to but I do an energy update every week I also share encouraging messages from Oracle some to row um, so if you like this unboxing today and you're interested in my empowering empaths channel go on over check it out give this a like give it a thumbs up I'm excited to use these with um, on my channel to encourage all of us so I continue to learn astrology share it with you and so thanks for being on my journey with me and namaste